No, I think it's both. Um, oil and politics go hand in hand over the years. What this is doing, uh, especially given the clamor by the U.S. president for prices to go down, the formation of the consumer body by India and China and the rest of them, um, uh, is, is to bring them together on the table. Uh, both the consumers, both the major producers and everybody who is in OPEC and say, look, this is not about OPEC. Uh, it is not indeed even about any country. It, it is about uh, sustainability of world oil supply at the right prices that will encourage investment, encourage returns to the owners of the resource and create a very equilibrium type economy. So I think it's an exciting it is exciting and normally I'll catch you and the other ministers outside hotels beforehand and you'll say we'll see what's happening but this time Mr Zangane yesterday of Iran was very very aggressive in his comments he said I don't think there will be a deal it has to be unanimous I don't think we're going to get one do you have any sympathy for his view that you just think there won't be a deal this time I think he does have a point there's a lot of concerns about how rapid rapidly uh, both uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia are going on this. But the honest truth is that I've learned to realize that uh, when you're going to hold uh, a negotiation, you, you don't take positions yet. Uh, you may have your sensitivities. When we get into that closed room, we're going to look at statistics, we're going to look at figures, we're going to look at what is driving everybody. And we've always managed to find a way of creating a common, a, a sort of harmonious relationship. So I think, yes, uh, Zangani is right, there are concerns, but again, Saudi Arabia is concerned about long-term sustainability of the agreement that we have with Russia and the rest. So, uh, so I think ultimately uh, we'll be looking to see what, what data they give to us. Uh, for a developing country like mine, yeah. uh, sustainability means a totally different thing for me. I mean, we all talk about too much supply, or oh, sorry, too less supply, uh, tightening of the market. But the reality, if you look into 2022, the U.S. is going to be pumping another 5 to 6 million barrels out. Saudi Arabia and the Gulf have a potential for another 5 to 6 million barrels per day. Developing countries, including Nigeria and indeed some of the new emerging greenfields, have a plan for about 10 million barrels. So ultimately, the work of OPEC, OPEC over the next 10 years is, is going, probably not going to be tightening of market, but how to deal with the surplus issues. Before we get on to um, supply and demand fundamentals and about Nigeria as well, which I do want to talk about because you have very important elections coming up on my birthday next year. Uh, but, but one thing I did want to say is, is that Mr. Zangane was very aggressive against Mr. Trump yesterday, saying we are not an arm of the DOE of the US. We are not part of the United States. It is not for Mr. Trump to tell us what to do, and he is using oil as a political weapon. How do you feel about those comments? No, I, I think uh, President Trump is doing what President Trump should do. Like he says, America first. All of us should move back and say Iran first and Nigeria first. And from there, we'll begin to create a bold negotiating platform. So it's not about uh, being upset with whatever any posi position anybody takes. It's about looking internally at what your own concerns are. My own concerns for Nigeria is to make sure that the price is right to enable us to drive development. Yeah. Something the president has... Uh, has, has Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.